customer said his belt popped off after he got to work. He said he heard a slight squealing sound, then it quit. They thought everything was good. He went back to start it up later, had no power steering, no nothing, the truck wouldn't move. And of course the belt had come off, so he puts the belt back on. This thing is still squealing like a married girl whenever her old man's not around. You know what I'm saying? Let's crank it up and let you get a listen. <laughs> sure if you're a do-it-yourself or you're someone who has been looking for that exact type of squeal and screech on YouTube all over the place and you haven't been able to find some because some people will say who a power steering squeech and uh, they'll turn it on and it's essentially dry bearing that you're hearing it leaves a slight roaring humming sound but loud screech that's a loud screech so it's more than likely on this truck going to be the idler a lot of these earlier models you know the, the 2000s and stuff i have similar setups in these this one's a two-wheel drive it's the 4.2 liter and we're over here on the passenger side you know you got alternator right here and then right down in there your tensioner it does move really easy so that has definitely lost tension that could be part of the problem i had to disassemble a few things and jump into this first thing we're checking just to verify we got the ac clutch right here it's on high it's running see how the tensioner looks like it's wobbling back and forth as it's going i would say that is the problem have got the Deco no slack automatic belt tensioner 89260 and that's pretty cool because all you got to do is scan that barcode right there for the installation video it will go into detail on what you need to do and how you need to install this particular tensioner which is pretty cool made right here in the USA we'll give you some basic instructions right here that kind of tells you what all you need to do for those who do not know usually what will happen is the bearings on the back half of these will go bad you can buy the pulley itself by itself they do have the one that is nice and smooth like this one or you got the one that's got the rib designs the grooves right through the center of it depending on if your belt goes on it or over at the front of the back side of the belt but this is supposed to have tension as you pull up on it there's a stop right here that's what's coming back and forth really nice and easy on this truck we can easily put the breaker bar on it and it'll move it back and forth with these and it'll get stuck right here in the middle and it should have full tension at all times this one you can't just push down on it and get it to work it's not supposed to be easy to move but let's get into this there's several different ways we can choose to do this it's just a matter of how do we want to do it what's going to be the easiest now i like looking at the fastest simplest way to do things especially if i'm going to recommend how to do it for a do-it-yourselfer if you look up other videos they might tell you you're going to take your cover here you're going to take your fan guard off what they don't tell you is you might have to take your fan off then you'll be sitting there fighting with the fan having to get the wrench to take that off you want to avoid that hook your battery and then proceed to come over here this alternator loose you're taking the belt off of it anyway the belt's going to be the most complicated part of this job so just get the damn belt off of it take the fasteners loose on the alternator you're going to have all the clearance you need to stick your hands right through here on the passenger side of the vehicle going straight down onto your tensioner pulley system and you will be able to break it loose do everything you need to do from this side this is the simplest way to do it it cuts through the problems gives you the room gives you the space right on the money for it if you're a do-it-yourselfer so let's get started a long gear wrench breaker bar and this is nothing but a 12.15 millimeter socket by stanley we're going to get on this tensioner then i'm going to pull it toward me on the passenger side we'll raise up on that tensioner and it will pull the tension off the belt make sure before you pull your serpentine belt off of anything that you are aware of how your belt goes back on you should be fine because it's going to have to be put on the exact same way and i pulled it off of that smooth pulley right there because it was the easiest one make sure you got the diagram that you need for the job or draw it out for yourself later itself is also going to have 15 millimeter fasteners on it so i can use the exact same breaker bar right here that one broke loose i can put a ratchet on it after the fact in order to get to the bottom one you do have this hose in the way so you're gonna have to move this out of the way to get to it while taking loose this fastener first we exchange sockets i've got a 13 millimeter on the end of my breaker bar here and it gives me some nice long reach and i can easily just take this turn it and break that fastener loose but that's broke loose i can put a regular socket ratchet on there and i can run that on off here then I will take the 15 millimeter and break the second fastener loose as well. The 
you want to know about tools, do-it-yourself, how-to videos, tradesmen, repairs, equipment, machines, boats, automotives, and much more, make sure you pop the clutch on that subscribe button. Go over to Instagram, hit follow, check out the Facebook page, TikTok, Rumble, and other social media platforms. Pull the fastener off it to the side. Move this line back and forth so you can easily get on top of this 15 millimeter fastener. And then, boom, you pull those three out. And you can pull your alternator loose. Good. Pull these out. We're ready to pull this up out of here. Your AC hose out of the way. Pick it up and move it past the AC line. Pull it over to the back side right here and you are in business. I like being able to have ratchets and tools with extra length for jobs like this. That way if you need to bypass something and make your life easier, you could definitely do that. What I've got on there is a half inch to three eighths reducer and I've got a Lyle T50 torque socket on there. Lyle is a little bit shorter than your traditional bit sockets, which is what I would recommend using in this situation. I can easily get down in here, head will stay locked into place, and I can guide the Torx bit into the fastener. What you gotta do is take your ratchet and start pulling back on it, keep some nice steady pressure. These are pretty tight whenever you first break them loose. They generally have Loctite on them. But as you can see right there, whenever I break it loose, I can move this ratchet back and forth, and then I can start breaking it loose a little bit more. Now whenever it gets easier, I can easily pull that off of here, take my socket, put it on a 3H drive ratchet, reach down in there, and zip that right off, no problem. Here's the Lyle Torx bit socket that I was talking about. It's a little bit more low profile. And I'm going to be using Michael Pro indexing low profile ratchet here because in this situation, actually reach down in there and get the Torx socket into the bolt head. The ratchet head at the angle that's convenient for me. I have plenty of room to ratchet it back and forth without worrying about any obstructions in my way overhead, such as the radiator hose. Now all I gotta do is stick my hand down in there and then pull this thing off. Plenty of room to reach over in behind here. If you get yourself a step up stool if you need to get positioned really good good and you can reach over in here and just ratchet this back and forth and run that bolt right out of there you can hear that it's still a little bit dry And right here we go. I'm not saying that this is going to be easy. Now it is doable. It's pretty convenient if you can get to it with this angle that we're going through here today. Poor shit. Who puts a plastic pulley on here? Look at that. It's plastic. That is junk. Not really spinning or or anything freely like you would think it would on other tensioners. I mean, it feels lightweight the the guts the insides of it here you can see where it's corroded up a little bit so you're going to want to go onto the frame of the truck onto your engine where you're mounting this in at and all that down nice and smooth because whenever you put this on here you want it to be flush you want to be able to put your two guides inside the holes that they're meant to be in and you want it to be nice and flush because whenever you put your belt back on you want it to be dead on you don't want it to be just a little bit off one way or the other because then you'll have to worry about slippage with your belt and all that kind of stuff because this stuff doesn't have the grooves it's just nice and smooth of course i'm not going to go into detail and try to show you how to sand this but you understand take yourself a wire brush to it get down in there sand it down real good make sure it's nice and smooth clean it off you know spray it with some wd if you got to get it lined up get it ready to roll match them up set them side by side make sure everything is the same thickness width size all that kind of stuff because you do not want to mistakenly put something on there that's not going to fit make sure everything's in line like set them side by side see where your guides are right here make sure they're in the right direction right angle all that kind of stuff before you put the new one on good thing about this one is it's steel and it's a little bit thicker as you can see right there it's a little bit thicker than the plastic one you can see where it's got the bearing on the back side of it so that's what it should be you will be using the same torque screw usually so if you don't damage it just pull that out clean it up and then slide it right back through here to make it easier on yourself you can take the outer pulley off it's really up to you in that aspect if you want to have that little extra room or not this is where it's going to line up at as you can see it's a little bit corroded it's down there and there with that sandpaper your wire brush just clean it up real nice that's where you need to install everything at right there all you got to do is stick your ratchet back down in here start tightening it up 
make sure it's good and snug. Now you are supposed to take a torque wrench and make sure that it's got proper amount of torque. Right there on the screen is the proper amount for this truck. You need to check what the proper amount is for your vehicle before installing it. So consult your manual or look it up online. I'm sure there's a PDF out here somewhere or a message board that will tell you the accurate torque for whatever vehicle it is that you're repairing. There's a few dozen different ways you can change these. Hopefully this method will help you. Now I'm not going to show you every little turn of the ratchet or anything like that. I'm showing you just enough to where you should get the basic concept and give you a little bit of advice. Now if you do not have a torque wrench of course just make sure that you tighten it up good and tight. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to risk breaking it. So if you do tighten it up nice and snug make sure it's with a 3H drive ratchet such as this one. I can apply some pretty good force to this. If I put a big half inch drive on here try to torque it i'm liable to put way too much torque i'm liable to damage it break it do not want that to happen once you get that all torqued down snugged up however you got to do it you work your way back here you plug back up your alternator in the same way that you took it apart well, then it's time to put the belt on check out the tour view i got linked in the description box below for this michael pro set And we're ready to install our belt. It's always recommended that you go ahead and put yourself a brand new serpentine belt on here. Very least, check your belt, inspect it, make sure that it's not cracked, broke, any shape, form, or fashion. Have yourself, you have to, a set of Craftsman picks. They got them down there at Lowe's for 25 bucks. Then whenever you feed it all down through here, you can see the last thing I've got my hand on is this belt right through here. And I'm going to be pulling it up through this hole and coming up here where this alternator is. And I'm going to kind of hold it there. I'm going to put tension on it with one of them hooks for my hands. And then I'm going to get my socket on the tensioner there. I'm going to pry up on it. And I'm going to wrap it right over top of that alternator. As you can see right there, it's exactly what I've done. Once I got it up, just got it started around the alternator. To where I get my hands on it, I went ahead and pulled it off of this smooth pulley right here. Put it around the alternator rich over there. Put it underneath the smooth pulley. Made it nice and easy. Checking all my belts. Making sure that they're in line within the grooves on each one of the other pulleys. And then I can release the tension. Everything is installed. All I have to do is fire it up. Make sure that it's fixed. Now, as you can see, there's no loud squealing, squeaking, or otherwise. So that was definitely our problem. This thing is running as intended, so we're ready to go collect their paycheck. I try my best to make videos like this for the average do-it-yourselfer. I want to put myself in a situation of a do-it-yourselfer. Think, how would this person try to get this fixed if they were looking at it? You can watch these different videos out here with people putting stuff up on the rack and all that kind of stuff, but that's not going to help the average do it yourself or they might not have the tools needed to do the job. So I try to do jobs like this with the bare minimum tools that might be readily available to the average person's toolbox. If this helped you, make sure to comment down below. Check out everything I got linked in the description box below. Find me on all these social media platforms. And if you're interested in tools, right here you go. I got a bunch of stuff coming up, a bunch of things that we used in this video will be coming up for review or has been reviewed. I do tool store tours, deal alerts, and much more. So make sure to pop the clutch on that subscribe button. Grab yourself some tools and make those repairs great again.